Hello and thank you for joining us um, on civiliantacticalweapons.com. Um, I've had some other uh, other viewer mail asking me uh, questions about uh, what do I carry for my concealed handgun um, since that was actually uh, I, I brought I mentioned that in my last episode that uh, I do have a CHL. Um, I actually carry the uh, another H and K uh, USP Compact 45. Um, it's got the reliability of the uh, other HNK USP Expert 45 I mentioned, um, but it does come in a smaller frame. Um, I did buy the uh, I did buy the steel um, slide, so it's actually got the uh, you know, it's got like a, a chrome look to it, chrome slide. Um, you won't find too many of these. Most of the times, if you find these, uh, you'll find that these are either uh, probably most likely all black. Um, they are a little thicker. Um, so when we're talking about concealed handguns, this is not a very easy gun to keep concealed. Um, just a point of reference, um, I normally keep this thing uh, under the shirt with just a uh, regular uh, holster. Um, i got a Galco holster. So the way I keep the firearm is in the holster. Pretty simple. And uh, pretty much with a shirt over it. Um, it's not, uh, as you can tell, uh, it's not completely hidden. Um, it's not visible. So by CHL standards, um, I'm complying on everything. But, uh, you know, you're not, uh, I wouldn't refer to this as uh, ultra concealed. Actually, I had to drop the hammer before I could put that in the holster. Um, since I got the mags in here. Anyways, from an accuracy standpoint, um, I would uh, rate this gun fairly good. I mean, we're talking compacts, so it's uh, it's actually pretty good for a compact. Um, I would not uh, view the accuracy quite as good as using, for example, some other smaller pistols. Um, that are using, or not smaller pistols, but things are using smaller uh, caliber ammo. But, uh, you know, we really got to take down the situation of, you know, where are you going to engage a target um, and how much stopping power do you want. Um, so what I do is I carry the HK-45 Compact, and the Compact can carry an 8-shot magazine, of which I use Hydroshocks. Um, Hydroshock ammo is an excellent self-defense ammo. It's very expensive, so you never want to use it for, uh, you know, target shooting, of course. But uh, it is designed to pretty much uh, drop a target that you hit by creating an aftershock. That's why it's called a hydroshock. Um, it causes almost like a, a rattling through your body when it hits bone. So it creates a shock wave, um, I guess is the best way of describing it. Um, you can actually read about them uh, elsewhere, but uh, there's also various different descriptions of how it works. But in a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, so when you're looking at, uh, at this particular gun, um, everything is pretty much interchangeable with most HNKs. There is also something called an HNK USP uh, Tactical Compact, which is this exact same design and frame, but the barrel is a little bit longer. Um, I wanted the chrome, but uh, if you were actually going to go buy one, you want to buy an HNK Compact, I would actually recommend you go with the Tactical and get the little uh, smaller barrel on the end, because at the end of the day, if you have the holster here and it's going out the bottom anyways, you're not going to see it. Um, all the Galco holsters you get are open at the bottom, so having a, a barrel that slightly protrudes at the bottom would not be blocked by most conventional holsters. Um, and you would get a little bit more accuracy out of it. very happy with it. Um, I think the only complaints I have about this is, uh, one, the sights aren't adjustable, um, so you have to actually use a, a, a sighting tool to actually push the rear sight back and forth, um, just like most uh, compact weapons. Um, and this is probably my number one complaint with all compact weapons is they don't have adjustable sights. Um, it's very rare you find one. Uh, or if you do, you have to get an aftermarket kit. The, uh, the HNKs, again, are expensive guns, though. Um, this one here was uh, about $900 um, 
when I bought it brand new when they first came out. Of course, you can get them less now. Um, there's also a whole series of smaller H&K uh, pistols out now that uh, also uh, can fit those requirements. Um, if you look at uh, the new HK series that have come out this year, um, there are other uh, guns that also fit the bill. Um, I hope to actually buy a, a different gun, try that one out, and I'll also give you guys a report on that. As far as how much uh, rounds I've shot through this, uh, this is never jammed. Um, very typical H&K. However, I have, uh, I've only put about 1,000 rounds through it. Um, the accuracy at short range, um, the 10 to 15 range, I've never tried to engage anything at 25 yards with this, is uh, uh, very good, um, very reliable. You can actually pull the trigger off pretty quick and empty out all eight rounds in a very short time period. Um, I also particularly like uh, the Hogue. I put Hogue grips on all my guns. Um, it adds just a little bit more accuracy. Um, the also the thing is with all H&Ks, if you have small hands, H&K is not a gun I would recommend for you, actually any of their handguns. Um, actually some of the P2000s are a little smaller, um, but uh, I'd say in general H&Ks are designed for larger hands. Um, I have major problems with shooting things like Kimbers, uh, which are designed for, you know, I, I view smaller hands, I can't, I can't fit them. So, nice thing about here is I can put my hand around, around the trigger. And I can actually have just the tip of my finger touching the trigger with moving myself behind it. So if I'm getting in online, it's very easy for me to be able to use it with my hand to get up online very easily with my trigger finger just touching the trigger. Um, those of you who have taken any classes on trigger pull, you do not want your finger over the trigger because what happens is there's a natural movement when you have uh, too much or your finger goes over the trigger that the gun exaggerates. Um, if you have anyone out there who does a lot of shooting and they shoot to the left a lot, you may need to really look at your trigger pull um, because that's a very common mistake. But uh, the larger frame guns makes it very easy for me just to keep the tip of my finger on the trigger so I get a very, uh, uh, a very balanced trigger pull on it and create very accurate shooting. So uh, that's it and uh, stay tuned for further episodes at uh, civiliantacticalweapons.com. Have a nice day.